going to preach today, turn me up just a little, uh, probably a two-week series, and believe me, there's going to be some things in here that um, are going to be practical to your life. First week, I'm going to deal with marijuana is sorcery, and then we will deal with some health aspects of marijuana. My text for you today is Jeremiah 44, verse 17. Let's read it together, Church of God. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. You may be seated. Holy God, I do pray you'll help me preach. I do pray you'll give me good ground to preach upon. I do pray, Father, that you will teach, convict, help, and anybody listening who is under bondage or thinking about being under bondage to this wicked substance, Lord, when used as a drug, I pray, Father, that you will help them repent today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what these women were doing, church, they were arguing with the prophet Jeremiah. He tried to reprove them. He tried to warn them. And they basically told him, our men were involved in this. We did not do this without our men. So basically they were saying, you can go mind your own business, you're meddling. It is likely that this incense that was being burned to the Queen of Heaven was marijuana. They were offering it. As they burned it, they were getting high so to speak, intoxicated, and they were offering it to the androgynous drag queen of heaven. Things have been racing downhill. We think of recent times, but really since about the 1930s, things have been racing downhill. In the 1930s, the U.S. became awake to the marijuana epidemic. I didn't say 60s, I said 30s. Marijuana as a drug uh, to get high had been used in other lands since ancient times. But God protected the West. It was unaware of it, or it didn't care about it. Now, they knew about the plant. Oh, you better believe. Europe, America, the colonies knew about the, the plant. Hemp was used for fabric, rope, clothes for centuries. In the English colonies, King James in 1611, by the way, ordered that uh, hemp and flax are mandatory to plant. might have trouble seeing this, but marijuana, uh, sometimes spelled with an H, deceptive weed in 1975, the author says, hemp plants were widely cultivated in the United States as a fiber crop by early American settlers. George Washington grew cannabis on his own farm, not to smoke, but to use in making ropes. Marijuana and hashish were unknown as pleasure-inducing drugs. The vigorous and industrious endeavors of the young Puritan American Republic seemed to be incompatible with a habit that departed from reality. It just, it just didn't go with uh, the spirit of the colonies. Hemp has many uses. Even the fruit, the seed of it, is without THC or CBD. It's been a healthy food used by other nations. But the poison parts were avoided. Rawell, on the trail of marijuana, the weed of madness in 1939, notice the date there, when the New England settlers came 300 years ago, they brought with them a serviceable plant that they knew as Indian hemp, producing a tough fiber from which they made rope, hats, and even clothes. Somewhere, somebody said, let's smoke your socks, let's smoke your hat. People misuse all kinds of things that God gives us, amen? They're doing that today. 
You wouldn't believe the things, you know, paint, glue, whatever they can find. Let's see if I can get high off of this thing. They'll go in your bathroom and hide out and try to find chemicals. And it's just crazy. You wouldn't believe what's going on out there. Um, apart from Mexicans, there is very little antecedent history of its use in this country as an intoxicant and narcotic. However, in the first bohemian groups in the New York City in 1860, Ludlow smoked the drug and at 34 he died. Very interesting testimony that he has of his hallucinations, his feeling that he's one with God and had become God, J just as he experiments and died um, depressed about the actual drug. Uh, but, but they were experimenting uh, during this time period in the late 1800s. Some people were. It exploded, of course, by 1925, several sections of New York City came to know marijuana. Harlem's orchestra leaders and members of the hot jazz bands were often smokers of it. The fundamental preachers in New York called it insanity, that you're back to the jungles, that this is going to bring madness upon the nation, the jazz music, all of this, these drugs and all the things that they were doing. Then suddenly, almost overnight, it ceased to be a Mexican border problem or a jazz orchestra curiosity and straightway zoomed to the front as a major threat to American youth and as a national menace. It was with a start of amazement that we in America learned that marijuana, marijuana was actually one of the oldest and most virulent intoxicants of history. All of a sudden, this new thing, they realized, this is an ancient drug, and what Satan's doing is he's bringing this ancient pagan, actually the main ancient pagan drug, he's bringing it to the forefront for this last day's Babylon. And, uh, wow. Marijuana Deceptive Weed 75 says it was shipped up the Mississippi to river ports. And from there to large cities, by 1930, marijuana was available in most major American cities. But the users of the drug were generally found among the black minority groups and jazz musicians. Now, you're going to see something wild happen. You're going to see the underground black blues that blasphemed God, was into lesbianism, was into all kinds of uh, just anti-Christ drug use and, and fornication, just blasphemy, just, just bragging about selling their soul to Satan. You're going to find the world over in England and other places, Britain, become fascinated with this underground music and this underground culture that, by the way, many blacks hated and opposed and said that it was satanic. But then you're going to see the Eastern Indian gurus and the Eastern mysticism also bring marijuana. So basically you were just hit and then, of course, the rebellion blew up in the 1960s. Um, the communist attack upon America, rock bands, the East, the black blues. But all of this might have been only the tip of the iceberg. The headlines that I'm going to give you are only about two days old. Changes in Virginia marijuana laws take effect July 1st. Second headline, what is Delta 8 and why is it so popular? New York's first legal marijuana crop sprouts under the sun. Minnesota lawmakers voted to legalize THC edibles. Using recreational marijuana is associated with a higher risk of emergency room care and being hospitalized for any reason. Thailand makes marijuana legal. Indiana lawmakers will explore marijuana decriminalizing California bill would require mental health warnings on marijuana products. And then today, from the mail, exclusive, how California's legal cannabis dream became a public health nightmare. In the U.S. state, it's led to spiraling addictions, psychotic illnesses, and hospitals facing a deluge of poisonings. By the way, it's created a giant underground uh, uh, to undercut the legalized weed. And what's happening is, for whatever reason, the THC is just going up and up and up and up. And 
Oftentimes it's mixed with all kinds of other things. I already know people. I've interviewed them. I've tried to get them to be straight with me. And uh, the, the people have lost their mind. Uh, they're what would be called schizophrenic today. They hear voices. They, they get guidance. They, they have grandiose delusions. And nobody knows what happens. They said, I, I, I've just been smoking pot, that's all. I've just been smoking pot. But, but they're, they're, they're schizophrenic. Whatever, you know, devil possessed, or they've lost their mind, so, something's wrong with them. I don't mean that they're like a bunch of punks that sit over here with red eyes and giggle because they've been smoking pot. I mean, I, I can't stand the stuff, I tell you. In the world, I couldn't stand the stuff. It's just people walking around snickering. They don't even know what they're laughing about. It's just, it's just a, it's a ridiculous. But uh, these are people now all over America that from out of nowhere smoking pot, and all of a sudden, they're just going crazy. I, I mean, in a major way, a major way. One editor of a Wall Street Journal, June 6, says the stigma once attached to marijuana has vanished. 19 states have legalized cannabis for recreational use. Countless studies, though, have linked chronic cannabis use to schizophrenia. A meta-analysis in January examining 591 studies concluded that early marijuana use among adolescents was associated with a significant increase in the risk of developing schizophrenia. Well, it's not going to bother anybody. You're messing with stuff you barely even know, scientists barely even know, but we know enough. We know enough. Um, Rowell, on the trail of marijuana, the weed of madness in 1939, says marijuana produces a temporary insanity. Worse still, it's a shortcut to permanent insanity. Now listen. Because things become so-called legal with the court, that doesn't make it legal with God. And you've got a generation of Christians that cannot wait for something to become legal, and they think that all of a sudden that's God's stamp on it. So what's going to happen now is just as so many Christians have Sunday school, teach Sunday school, then they leave their seeker-friendly church and they go down to the restaurant and they have a daiquiri or whatever, they have alcohol. Now they're going to smoke a joint on the way to the restaurant after church. Well, it's legal. I'm just relaxing, you know. Um, I speak from the inspired scriptures today, which is our only infallible source. I speak from some history, and I speak from my own experience. My testimony is online uh, as a rock and roll guitar player for most of my life, guitar teacher for most of my life, or at least at the, at the time as, as a child, uh, from 16 on up. At age 12, my mother bought me a Marshall amplifier. And uh, being mature for my age, I found myself every weekend with a group of 18 and 20-year-olds. and. Uh, these were the actual brothers and sisters of the late 60s and early 70s hippies. And uh, they're barefoot, they have leather hats, they're uh, into Leonard Skinner and uh, every hippie thing that I couldn't imagine. They want to go down to the river and we stay from Friday to Sunday. That's what we do every single weekend when I wasn't at summer camp as an equestrian counselor. They lived and they breathed marijuana and other things. I, I know what I'm talking about from 12 years old. Um, we relocated to Texas, rock bands, just everywhere. That's what everybody does. You go to school, you get a ride to school, you go to lunch with somebody. That's all they do is they're smoking pot, smoking pot, smoking pot. Here, you want some pot? Th their eyes are all red. They don't do anything. They're drained. They have no motivation. All they do is walk around, giggle, and look at you with red eyes. I wanted nothing to do with it, but it's around you. Roommates smoking pot, bands smoking pot, everywhere. Um, I won't get all into that right now. I just want to let you know, there's a lot of people that say, oh, he's just paranoid. He's speaking about some hallucination. He thinks about marijuana, and, uh, but, but I smoke it every day, and I know what I'm talking about, you know. You, you don't know anywhere near, probably, um, what I know. 
Uh, but nevertheless, maybe you do. But if you've been smoking it that long, then you ought to know how wicked it is. You ought to know what it does to you. you. You ought to know what it does to your manliness, what it does to your motivation, what it does to your mind. And I'm going to show you today that it's demonic, it's devilish, and it's satanic, and you're actually participating in sorcery. Let's begin with a foundation. My goal today is for people that might hear this to listen and repent. And my other goal is that you never mess with this stuff. You never experiment. You never try. If somebody's messing with it, you leave. and Find another crowd to hang out with. And I want you to listen today. I'm going to try not to yell too much, but I'm very... Uh, passionate about what I have to say today. Hippies are a very sensitive bunch, and uh, the marijuana makes them that way, and um, you got to be careful or they'll get emotional with you. But I, I need you to understand, you, you need to throw away your satanic weed. You need to quit participating in sorcery. People say, I believe marijuana is in the Bible. In the past, I would tell them, you're delusional. Now I would say, you're probably right, but it's not where you think it is. It's not where you think it is. Here's where they think it is. Genesis 1, God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for getting stoned. Is that what he said? No, no, for what? For meat, to eat, for your nourishment. Not your intoxication, not, not your brain damage, not your sorcery. People say, well, there it is. He said, every herb, every tree, there it is. Every green thing, you know, there it is. We're supposed to eat it. Um, this is before the fall. And even then, every did not mean every, because there was one tree that God said, don't eat that tree. Don't eat of the fruit of that tree. So there was one tree before the fall that was prohibited. After Eve ate the fruit of this tree, how did she eat it? Satan said, oh, you got to be experienced. Are you experienced? That's what they said in the 60s. Oh, your mind will open. You will be as God's knowing. I, I, I tell you, if you will just take of this, you will be enlightened. Oh, you wouldn't believe the things we think of. You could actually hear colors you can actually music is so intense uh, time will kind of stop it's just wonderful your mind will be opened uh, she bought it and she gave it to Adam and the human race fell what a lie the devil the same devil that said if you want to be smart if you really want to have your mind enlightened eat of this tree that same devil's back again He's back today. Um, he's never left. And what he's doing, though, is he's trying to convince a generation that this is good for them, it's enlightening, it's relaxing, and it's a wonderful thing to be high, intoxicated. After Adam partook of that tree, the curse came upon this world. So guess what? You're living in a world where there's some things that are good to eat and things that are poisonous that'll kill you dead. There's other things that'll kill you slowly. There's other things that'll just take your brain away, give you brain damage, and make you think the whole time as it's giving you brain damage that you're actually being enlightened, becoming smart. They say there's, a, all throughout history, they say there's probably nothing more delusional than a marijuana smoker. There are dangerous plants. Some of them are useful for clothing, but you should not eat them. Some have one part that is poison and the other part that is good for you. We're to use this world and not abuse it. There's a man that gathered a wild plant in the Bible and they threw it into the stew. And they said, there's death in the pot. You know what? There's death in what they call pot today. A form of mental death. 
death to your motivation, your manhood, your physical health, and certainly your spiritual life. Anything that deludes your mind, intoxicates your mind, is wicked. I've showed you before the attack upon the New Bible versions, anything dealing with certainty, anything dealing with study, anything dealing with reason has been taken away from the New Versions. Why? Because at the heart of occultism, at the heart of Satanism, at the heart of this goddess worship and this New World Order is silence your mind so devils can take over. And um, Anton LaVey said this is what Satanism is, it's an anti-intellectual device. Uh, it all throughout the ages, silencing your mind, Buddha, the no mind, no thinks, no things. The idea is to chant or do something to silence your mind so you can get in this ecstatic state. What does our Bible say, Church of God? Y'all with me today? I hope so, because we got a lot. And I'm going to try to hurry. But if you're not with me, it's going to slow me down. I've got to keep repeating myself. 1 Thessalonians 5. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be what? Sober. How can you be sober on marijuana? You're not sober on marijuana. Titus says the aged women, that they may teach the young women to what? Be sober. Be sober. One of your jobs as an aged woman is to go around and teach the young women the first thing, the first thing, before they love their husbands, before they love their children, before they do all these other stuff, before they be keepers at home, before they be obedient, you're to teach them, be sober, be sober, be sober. You can't be sober when you're high, when you're stoned. That, that is the opposite of sober. It says in 1 Peter 1, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. That means don't even let your mind drift. Don't let it just wander and blow in the wind. Be focused. Be attentive. Know what you're thinking and why. Don't let your mind just go. 1 Peter 5, Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. God forbid that you as a Christian get stoned and you don't even know what you're thinking and, and what the, the devil's got control. You've given yourself over to Satan now. God's not happy about it. Galatians 5, he says, for witchcraft or drunkenness or revelings, and look at this, and such like, anything that's like it. You say, well, you know, the, the stone, uh, uh, getting high is different than the drunkenness of alcohol in some ways. And so is cocaine different than marijuana. And so is Valium different than alcohol. They're all different things, but they are still intoxicants. Drunkenness and such like of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I believe that's the coming millennial kingdom, the judgment seat of Christ being found unprofitable and a castaway I believe in eternal security, but I believe that there is chastisement and judgment from God and a disinheritance, not of your eternal life, but of the coming millennial kingdom. But why would anybody mess with this? With such a warning, so scary, why would anybody go get stoned or high or intoxicated with such a thing? This isn't new. It goes back thousands of years at the heart of paganism. This metrosexual, unisex stuff, this isn't new stuff. It's at the very heart. That mother goddess that they were worshiping, they believe was transsexual, bisexual, androgynous. You are right in the very heart of paganism. There is no new thing under the sun, see. The Bible calls this last kingdom Babylon. You've returned right back where it started when man first rebelled. This is where you are at, my friend. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. It means that this is disorder. Excess means disorder. There's no balance. There's no harmony. A person that drinks alcohol has no balance in his life. Everything is out of order. Same with marijuana. Same with marijuana. Be filled with the Spirit. That's what God calls us to do. God calls you to be filled with His Spirit. That's having your mind and your faculties in control, not in disorder. Be not drunk with wine includes alcoholic wine with no other drugs but alcohol. 
However, it also includes mixed wine. Mixed wine could mean grape juice with spices like cinnamon and, and healthy things in there, but mixed wine sometimes in pagan days meant intoxicating drugs added to the alcohol to make it all the more potent. Uh, Proverbs says, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Ongoing research, such as molecular archaeology, they found that the ancient wine among many of the pagans, believe it or not, contained psychoactive plants. They were drug inebriation inside They've, they've shown now that they had in this wine drugs. In fact, marijuana was often used in alcohol, in wine. It was mixed inside the wine. The worshipers of Dionysus, for example, called the god of wine and debauchery. In our Bible, that would be Baal, Moloch. Research is showing that they also used cannabis, and that was their main drug. That god of wine was a god of marijuana wine. Dr. David Hillman says Dionysus actually possessed his followers, and Euripides' Greek audience clearly equated this act with the use of mind-altering drugs. They would even rip apart animals and let the blood just pour all over them as they got high and stoned and just sick things that... We don't even want to talk about. This is what God's people were doing. This is what some of God's people rebelled and began to follow this type of stuff. Raul, on the trail of marijuana, the weed of madness in 1939, says 2,800 years ago, Homer refers to marijuana under the name of Nepenthe in his Odyssey and tells how this intoxicant cannabis was put into wine and other drinks, causing men to forsake home and family and to turn into swine. You sure do act like swine. You, you just don't do anything. You just don't do anything. You say, well, I know somebody, and they smoke pot. What? You know what? Let your kid try to follow. So many people's lives are destroyed by these things. It's like they say about alcohol. Oh, well, they drink alcohol, and then I see them years later, and they're winos. They can't even walk to their car, you know. Everybody's got some little story about how they've been able to keep it together. Well, you're not keeping it together with God. I don't care how it looks outwardly. You're not keeping it together with God. There's all kinds of sinners, people into pornography, people into all kinds of horrible things, and they can look normal to you, but a lot of times they don't look normal. You need to deal with the fact that we're in the last days. The wine of Babylon will be poured out on all nations. What is this wine? It's the wine of deception. It's the wine of sorcery. Intoxication is a form of sorcery. And marijuana has been for thousands of years the darling of necromancers and shamans. They use marijuana to talk to the dead. The drug of choice, they said, that opens the mind to the spirit world of devils like no other drug. Notice this now, Revelation 18. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Just about every school shooter has been on marijuana along with psychotropic drugs. Can you imagine the sorcery, the things they're listening to, the influences? This is just insanity. What a nation. By thy sorceries, plural. Jeremiah 51, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Now, notice, it said right here, by her sorceries, sorceries were all nations deceived. Here it says, by her wine, all nations are deceived. Her wine is sorcery. The use of wine, the use of this wine was sorcery. When you smoke marijuana, you are participating in an act of shamanism. You are participating in a disconnecting, an opening of your mind to the spirit world. And I believe the Bible's saying these sorceries, the whole world, the whole world's going to be getting stoned, and among other things. 
and, and, and it's going to come back to where they're going to use enchantments and all of the other things that go along with getting stoned. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. How much more so when you put marijuana in it? So we've seen that some of the so-called wine in the Bible often contain drugs. Let me show you something, all right? Exodus 37, he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices. Sweet spices made up the holy anointing oil according to the work of the apothecary. Let's see some of these. Exodus 30. Take that also under the principal spices. Myrrh, sweet cinnamon, sweet calamus. And you're to put them all together and it made this holy anointing oil. Okay? They say, these pot smokers, are saying, we believe calamus, which by the way just means reed. That's what the word calamus means. It's some sweet reed that they were using for the um, pure anointing oil and things like that. Um, I believe that calamus of the Bible, and it seems to be um, a lot, if not the majority of old and modern scholars uh, seem to agree, is lemongrass, lemongrass. And so, when you study lemongrass, I mean, everything about it is healthy, useful. It's a wonderful thing like cinnamon. In fact, when they took all the essential oils they could find, lemongrass had one of the most powerful antibacterial, anti-herpes, anti, I mean, you just go the list. It, it even outdid tea tree oil. It, it, it's just amazing. But I'm not going to get into that today. But what I want you to realize is what happens when you take something good and godly and healthy and you mix it with marijuana? You say, well, that's close enough. The Hebrew word, I mean, maybe we could kind of say it's related somewhat to the word for cannabis and and maybe we can try to find marijuana in the Bible. No. No, no, no. I want you to notice Exodus 30. What did our God say? You shall offer no strange incense thereon. Well, what's a strange woman? What strange apparel? What strange incense? Boy, when you get off into perverted things and call it holy incense, boy, God's getting a very angry about that. He's getting very angry. Notice how angry he gets. And Leviticus 10, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire as it went up. This is a mixture that God did not ordain. Why would they do that? And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. I think they learned it from pagans. I think the pagans told them, oh, you want incense? We got some sweet incense for you. Let me show you the real incense. It'll open. God will love it. Oh, it really gets you in touch with God. Come, I believe they stuck marijuana in there. And I believe you stick cannabis in there, light it on fire. And I think God lit them on fire. See, here's my point. You are provoking God. You are provoking God with marijuana. Now let's tighten this thing up. Smithsonian Magazine, June 4th, 2020. Archaeologists identify traces of burnt cannabis in ancient Jewish shrine. Jewish. New research suggests the mind-altering substance may have been widely used in the ritual practices of the kingdom of Judah. Now a lot of people are like, yippee, boy, we found out something now. Everybody was getting stoned and God approved of it. No, why don't you read your Bible and find out how many times the kings apostatized. Find out how many times they rebelled and they started copying the pagans and Ishtar and all these others and they started doing like the nations did. But guess what? Now we're here in the last days. They find out that guess what we found out in one of the altars in Judah? We found marijuana. They were burning marijuana incense. Roughly 30 miles south of Jerusalem, archaeologists excavating an ancient Jewish shrine have found traces of burnt cannabis and frankincense on a pair of limestone altars. Praise God for frankincense. Cannabis, 
Strange fire. Bad, 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 bad. What was the time period? Roughly 760 to 715 BC, they think. Okay, so that's there with Hezekiah, Josiah. What did they bring? They brought reforms. Why did they have to bring reform? Because there were sodomites everywhere. Baal worshippers. The altars were found to have a mixture of animal dung and cannabis that contained sufficient THC to get those breathing in its fumes high for science news. The researchers write that the dung and animal fats were used to burn the cannabis and frankincense at temperatures that would release the respective mind-altering and fragrant smoke. Oh, let's read about Josiah. He had to do a job. What did Josiah have to do? It says in 2 Kings, he put down the idolatrous priest whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places. The kings had said, y'all get out there and burn that marijuana for us uh, in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, just like we found. Them also that burned incense unto Baal. What were they burning unto the transgender God? Marijuana, marijuana. And he break down the houses of the sodomites. Well, if they're worshiping Baal, the transgender god, you've got sodomites. He took away the horses. And, and this is something people are like, what does this mean? He took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the sun at the entering in of the house of the Lord? And people say, are these real horses? Or are they images of horses? And Maybe they were both, but it's very interesting that in the midst of this sodomy and bell worship, and now we see research that they were burning cannabis uh, uh, as incense. You find out he break in pieces the images, cut down the growth, fill their places with the bones of man. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and wizards and images and the idols and all the abominations. It seems like a whole lot of devil possession come from all that marijuana incense. Uh-oh. Times of Israel has more to say. 2020 revealed in first temple era. Another massive temple was in use near Jerusalem, four miles northwest of ancient Jerusalem city of David, discovered in 2012. The Matzah temple is contemporary with the first temple in Jerusalem. Well, what did you find there? Okay, we know there was marijuana. What else did you find? Among the other remains of worship activity are a stone-built offering table and a whole lot of artifacts, including figurines. The four figurines discovered at the site, two human-like and two, what? Horses. You'll so show the people, oh, look at these little horse figurines. Well, wow, they may indicate that the temple was used for worshiping a variety of gods. Somebody had apostatized. Somebody was worshiping Baal. Somebody was worshiping little horse figurines that Josiah destroyed. Somebody was getting stoned as they cross-dressed and smoked pot, breathed in the incense. Even the Times of Israel go on to say the Bible records two religious reforms enacted by King Hezekiah and King Josiah and said Riley that the fact that there were two is very telling about the widespread cultic practices that were being forbidden. They're admitting, they said, it must have been paganism everywhere. There must have been smoking pot everywhere. And finally, God would wake up a king, and he'd go tear it all down and say that strange fire, that's wicked incense, and he'd get rid of the bell priest, and they would bring everything back, but then they would go right back again. They would go right back again. Chronicles says, And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem. And all the altars for incense took they away. What kind of incense was there? Marijuana, pot smoking, pot head, marijuana. Isaiah 65, I have spread out my hand, says God, all the day into a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice in the gardens and burn incense upon altars of brick. Oh, yeah, they're getting stoned. Jeremiah 7, will you still murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, and burn incense to Baal? They've dug up writings and things. It says, Baal, are you male or female? I guess you're both. And walk after other gods whom you know not. How do you think they worship Baal? They did it by pot smoking. You want to get effeminate as a man, smoke pot. Jeremiah 11, 
For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah. And according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have you set up altars. Altars, like we've seen. They found some of them to that shameful thing. Even altars to burn incense and to bell. They sacrifice, says Hosea, unto Balaam and burn incense to graven images, little horses and little things, you know. Your marijuana is not new. What's happening to America and all the countries of the world throughout right now, that's not new. You've reverted back to paganism. You've reverted to sorcery. As the Bible says, there'll be adulterers and they will be sorcerers in the last days. Dope smoking sorcerers. Marijuana was used for sorcery. The Muslims, according to Martin Booth, the mystical Sufi Muslims, Sufi Muslims believe spiritual enlightenment was attainable through a state of ecstasy or altered consciousness, and they use hashish, that's marijuana, uh, uh, the resin of it, the, the, the specifically for that purpose. To them, hashish was sacramental, a portal through which they communed directly with Allah. Were they communing with Jesus? So they were getting stoned communing with Allah. Who do you think they were communing with when they get stoned? Commonly claimed that the wicked Assyrians used hemp for incense in pagan worship. John A. Russ says recipes for a hemp incense were found in the cuneiform library of the legendary Assyrian king that was born in 685. Records from the time of his father. They list this cannabis as one of the main ingredients of the paramount sacred rites. This was everywhere. Pot smoke, hemp was all over the place. Pot smoking, incense, breathing in the vapors of marijuana is at the very heart of paganism, just like androgyny. And entheogen, meaning able to generate the divine within, is a psychoactive substance capable of creating a significant, spiritually oriented, altered state of consciousness. Potter and Joy, 1998, further explained some peoples have claimed that the cannabis high opens an inner door through which the voices of spirits can be heard, offering wisdom from the spiritual realm. The tradition of using cannabis as an entheogen stretches back thousands of years. In India, cannabis is associated with the Hindu god Shiva. That's Baal, transgender. Michael Coltrane, naked magic and marijuana. This is... This is pretty common, and it's growing. It is growing. I mean, books like this are coming out. Carrie Connor, Conjuring with Cannabis, Spells and Rituals for the Weed Witch. It's just a big, giant Ouija board. In fact, what the magicians and Satanists actually say, if you want a quick way to immediately get in touch with spirits without having to go through all this magic ritual and stuff, just go get stoned. The devil shows right up. Let's really get into something here. Botanical Museum leaflets of Harvard University, volume 25, number 6. The hemp cannabis was the chief textile plant in northern China, and the seed was a leading grain. It was also an important, remember it doesn't have THC in the seed. It was also an important drug plant. There are archaeological and historical records that it has been found on China, found in China since Neolithic times, meaning the Stone Age. Okay, they've been growing hemp since the Stone Age. They've been getting stoned with it also. One of the earliest Chinese Materia Medica books, can't pronounce that, states concerning hemp, if taken in excess, it will produce hallucinations, literally seeing devils. That's their words. If taken over a long time, it makes one communicate with the spirits. So, the Chinese. Ancient books, ancient, thousands of years ago, are saying this hill, this cannabis, will cause you to see devils. And even if you don't see what they're thinking is a devil, they said you're going to communicate with spirits, which is they probably think was the dead grandfather, see, or whatever it is. They just said it opens you up. You got to be careful because devils will show up, but... Now, as a Christian, we believe they're all devils, right? 
Nothing new under the sun, folks. In fact, Dao Hung Chin, Chinese alchemist, born in 456, says that at his time, necromancers use it. They use cannabis. Necromancers, talk to the dead. Necromancy that God forbade. And discussion of the possible use of hallucinogenic plants by ancient Taoist practitioners. Needham notes a record of the addition of cannabis to the contents of incense burners to generate hallucinogenic smokes. Seen in the Taoist collection, Essentials of Matchless Books, 561 to 578. I'm and it goes on and on and on. Medical books, so-called, which are really occult books, alchemy books, uh, Chinese continue to say, if you want to get in touch with devils, if you want to get in touch with the dead, smoke pot or breathe it in. Breathe it in. In fact, in ancient China, the use of cannabis as a hallucinogen was probably associated with shamanism. You don't say. Medical reports. In 1875, in China, it says, if too much hemp be eaten, devils may be seen. In fact, it is taken by those who indulge in spiritualism. Spiritualism was a, re a word at the time in the 1870s for talking to the dead. But let's just get, what, what revived in the 60s was basically Aleister Crowley's vision for America and for the world. Aleister Crowley was one of the sickest witches, wizard, warlock, sodomite, evil Satanists that you could ever imagine. Um, he was born in 1875, died in 1947. He wrote, I simply went over to Satan's side, and to this day I cannot recall why. All of a sudden this devil appears to him and says, I am the snake that giveth knowledge and delight and bright glory. I stir the hearts of men with drunkenness, announced the demon from a small cloud, and Crawley dutifully copied down the demon's words. The demon said, To worship me, take wine and strange drugs. They shall not harm ye at all. It's a lie. Fear not that any god shall deny thee for this. What are they telling the marijuana smokers today? What are the same devils that told that to Crowley telling the marijuana, oh, no, you, th this is good. They're saying the exact thing. God does it. God wants you. Jesus got high. You need to get stoned. It's a wonderful thing. He gives you the green herb. That's from the mouth of Satan. That's from the mouth of Satan. You're, you're talking the same devilish doctrine. And the Bible said in the last days, they're going to give heed to Seducing spirits, they're going to give heed to seducing spirits. Um, as their evangelist, Crowley turned on the great minds of his generation. H.G. Wells, he turned on to hashish, marijuana. H.G. Wells is the one that talked about the open conspiracy, that we're going to bring this about through propaganda, but if, if, if you take too long taking in the propaganda, we're going to bring... Uh, bloodshed but we are going to bring in our new conspiracy and really what they're doing is they're using dope that, that most of them really believe this but a lot of folks are just using dope to dumb you down and make you stupid so they can rule you it's been done over and over and over throughout history that's high time greats Alistair Crowley um, Crowley anticipating the mysticism of the 60s by half a century wanted to use the effects of peyote and hashish to give proof of a new order of consciousness. Oh, him and uh, his buddy H.G. Wells getting stoned. They planned this whole thing right from the devil's desk. In fact, Crowley actually wrote a book, Hashish, the, the Herb Dangerous. In 1898, 99, I had just left Cambridge, says Crowley. This is him writing. Together for many months, we studied and practiced ceremonial magic and ransacked the ancient books and manuscripts. Through the ages, we found this one constant story. There's a seeker. He meets an adept, a trainer, and obtains from the said adept a certain mysterious drug or potion, and the result, at least, of opening the gate of the other world. My travels in India had familiarized me with their systems of meditation. Many of the lesser yogis employed hashish, to obtain some samadhi, the oneness with the universe, or with the nothingness, that supreme trance. He said, we learn to get stoned with cannabis to have this state of mind. What does he say? He wrote a book about it. This was my hypothesis. Hashish, cannabis, is the drug which loosens the girders of the soul, that supreme state in which the man has built himself up into God. 
He tried every drug you can imagine, and he says it's weed. It's all drugs to some degree, but he says weed is the main one that opens you up to the spirit world. That's Alistair Crowley. Back on the back of the Beatle album, you know, in the 1960s. Songs about him. Wow. Dr. A.L. Hodgen, Maryland Medical Journal of 1885, says hashish has long been employed by the Malaysians as a means of producing a peculiar kind of intoxication. That ecstatic state produced by the same undoubtedly bears, in many ways, a close resemblance to the results manifested by hypnotism. He called his article the similarity of the phenomena of hypnotism, spiritualism, that's necromancy, to the physiological action of cannabis. He said people that are stoned look like people that have been playing with seances. People that are stoned look like people that are devil-possessed and hypnotized. It looks the same to me, to these doctors. Hannah M. Wolf, in an interview with Blavatsky in New York in 1874, Blavatsky was the cross-dressing, short-haired, witch, devil-possessed woman that uh, wrote Lucifer magazine. That was her magazine. She says, it was evident from the first that Blavatsky smoked tobacco to great excess frequently, as she told me, using a pound a day. I soon learned also that she was addicted to the use of cannabis, hashish, several times endeavored to persuade me to try the effect upon myself. She said she found nothing to compare with its effects in arousing and stimulating the imagination. What does she mean by that? She means occultism. Just like Crowley, there's nothing, there's nothing like cannabis that stimulates the imagination and opens the door to that world. Rowell on the trail of marijuana. The weed of madness in 39 says Hindu priests and worshipers of the god Vishnu in India used it to induce a religious frenzy and hallucination in connection with their rites. Marijuana, the deceptive weed, 75, says cannabis was associated with the god Shiva and was used during the performance of religious rituals in temples. The earliest European explorers observed the smoking of hemp or daga by all the racial groups which populated South Africa, the Bushmen, the Hottentots, the Bantus. The pygmies get, got in on it. I want you to listen carefully to this occult article from a magazine called The Star of the Magi, an exponent of occult science, so-called, in 1899. I want you to listen now. The potency of spirit can at no time be fully experienced unless the active mind is perfectly dormant. By the art of hypnotism, the operator assists the subject to bring about this condition. They're saying you cannot get in touch with the spirit world until you silence your mind. Okay, that's magic, to silence <laughs> your mind. Now watch this. The process of putting aside the active mind may be accomplished without the aid of a magnetizer, a hypnotist. This trance state may be brought about by the use of drugs as hashish or bang, which is just cannabis. What are they telling you? They're telling you that you can get in this same demonic state, what we've seen from China, what we've seen from the shamans, what we've seen from necromancers in India, in China, and right here in Judah, uh, in, the, in our Bible, smoking pot, incense unto Baal. It is in this state that the phenomena of spiritism, contacting the dead, may become manifest. One is upon the astral plane and in touch with the astral light. start smoking pot next thing they got dungeons and dragons and they're reading all these satanic books about oh this is the real bible ezekiel was stoned and they're getting into all this ufology ufology stuff and you know they're, they're you just oh god help us get it far from me it's bad enough that it depresses your manhood takes away any drive for you to get anything done in life causes you to be paranoid. I don't know why anybody would want to go get stoned. You say you want to relax. God has all kinds of great ways for you to relax. Amen? So we'll talk about that next week. I'll give you my last verse for today. 
my sermons is now has now come to an end. And so is our nation. First Peter four, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. For two thousand years Peter has said, Wow, we're in the last days right now. <laughs> well guess what? You're now in the last of the last days. You're in the final seconds, the final minutes of that 2,000 year period. What are, what's everybody doing? They're getting stoned like a bunch of pothead dingbats. They're getting stoned. They're practicing sorcery. They're practicing cross-dressing. Dear Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that this first message on this subject would touch somebody, will help somebody, Father, I pray one thing that will come out of this message is that you help us watch our minds, Lord, and control our minds and not let devils take away our mind and not letting our mind wander into all kinds of sewers, Lord, but we cast down every vain imagination and God forbid that we be under the power of something, God, that takes away not only our mind but our very body and our self-control and our, our, our mechanical Oh, God, I do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will awake people to this holy sobriety that's the fruit of your spirit, and they would walk in your spirit, Lord, in all righteousness and goodness. Father, let those that have messed their bodies and their minds and wasted, oh, God, you said to redeem the time. How much time have they wasted smoking pot, Lord, smoking marijuana, Oh, God, so much time of just stupidity, thinking they're smart, thinking they're, they're in touch with fascinating wisdom, Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus they can see how much time they wasted in stupidity and also sorcery, God. Just letting the devil pull them around by their nose, God. How appropriate it is, Father, that everybody has these hooks in their nose to be pulled around by Satan right now, God. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you help us open eyes, bring repentance. If you've heard this message, you've made it this far, I commend you. Thank you for listening. I do pray right now for you. If you seek mercy for your marijuana use, if you want to be delivered from it, we have a church right now with all heads bowed that are praying for every listener right now that you would get free. Dear Father, I pray in unity with my brothers and sisters here in your church that you would give your supernatural power through your Holy Spirit to make them hate it, Lord, to make them want to be in control of their mental faculties, to, to make them detest the idea of being deluded and out of control and having their mind wander in this hallucination and paranoia of sorcery and intoxication. Father, please deliver them right now. Deliver every person. Make them free, Father, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for our salvation that's a free gift. Thank you for loving the world and giving your only son that we might be saved. In Jesus' name, amen.